So this is what we're aiming to make, which is a light catcher which can be hung in the window. It has got a, a piece of cotton actually on the top there, so it can be hung up. Oh, probably using a suction pad or maybe hooking over the window latch at the top. Hopefully you've watched the first video on how to make this frame. Now, I've put a backing on this one, but do that at the end. Don't put your backing on yet. Wait until you finish your glass painting first. Making this piece is quite simple. It uses all traditional glass painting techniques. Uh, I've got some stuff over here. Um, here's my design. Obviously it's different from the one you've just seen. I'm not, I'm not going to do several the same. In fact, I'm doing a few of these box frame light catchers with different designs. And here's a piece of just clear acetate. I have wiped this down, that's all I've done with it. Wiped it down with a cloth. So I think I'll work that way up. I could put it like that and cover the whole sheet, but I'm not going to because that would be a waste of acetate. A little bit of spare at the top, a piece of sellotape, there you go. and I'm just going to stick it down basically so the acetate doesn't move and it stays over the design. And I see a couple of outside lines on this. Let me turn it over so you can see it. A couple of outside lines. The one inside one is the one you're going to paint up to so I would normally outline that. The outside one is the one you're going to cut so you don't have to worry about outlining that but do outline the inside one it'll get give something for the paint to go against in the background. Okay I've made up a piping bag here we go my piping bag. If you can't remember or you don't know how to make a piping bag or how to pipe generally, do watch our basic outlining video. It will take you through it step by step. So as normal I will start in the middle and all the time it squeeze. He says that was blocked while I was talking. It squeeze, lift, and pull. Squeeze, lift and pull. And I will turn the work round as I go, so I'm not leaning over anything I've already done. Now this is going to take me a little while to do, obviously. So I won't make you watch it all. Maybe I'll do a bit of speed it up. And there we go. See that's now outlined. A little bit for you. And I should just wait for that to dry. Right, so here's our piece ready for painting. Normal grass painting sort of procedure. We're going to let me just get that bit off. There we go. Um, we're going to flood fill it. So first of all you need to make sure the area you're working on is flat. So see, there we go. I'm going to put some weight on that side because it's obviously puckering up. So let me just weigh that down. There we go. Little spirit level. I believe you can get an app for your phone to do exactly the same thing. So that makes sure the area is flat. If it's not, all the pool will flood, flow in one direction and you'll get shading. Nice technique if you choose to have it, but don't do it by accident. Next you'll notice I'm using a solid 
paintbrush, so much easier to clean, one wipe and you can change colour, so I only need to use one brush. There's no reason you shouldn't use a, a bristle, normal bristle brush, but remember, don't brush on the thing, just push the paint around with it. We are flood filling, we're not brush painting. Final thing to say, the order of the colours. I always start with the darker colours, so I'm going to start with black and work my way up to the lighter ones. If you drop a lighter colour into a dark one, it's not so bad as dropping a dark one into a light one. I'm going to use a variety of paints on this piece, mostly because I haven't got all the right colours in, in one type of paint. It's okay to use different types of paints on the same piece, but, but if they are a different base, you've got to make sure they're on the other side of an outlined line. Don't mix two paints with a different base in the same area, you'll have an awful mess. Each time I paint, I'm going to leave it to go tacky dry until I paint the next bit. That's not absolutely always necessary, but it is a good practice. So, starting with the dark ones and working away light, I'm obviously going to start with black. Try and do it so you're not leaning over an area you've already painted, if at all possible. Not always possible, but certainly not newly painted. And secondly, try and have your jar as close as possible, so you're not having to lift the paint right over the piece. So we're flood filling, on it goes, and then push it and make sure it goes right up to the outliner. You don't want any gaps between the paint and the outliner. It may look, not look really bad now, but when you lift it up to the light, it does. It may look as though I'm putting a lot on, but it will shrink back a little bit as it dries. So there's the boots done, and we'll carry on and do the belt. So I'm flooding and basically pushing the paint to make sure it's against the outliner. That way, it's going to dry nice and flat and give a very smooth finish. Now, make sure we're against the outliner all the way around. Now, I've done that, make sure I put the top back on my paint. Just to show you, I hope you can see that. Sounds like I'm on a shopping channel flogging these things, but seriously, that's now clean. I can go and use another colour. It's as quick as that. Right, leave that to go track and dry, and we'll come back to it in a few minutes. Well, about 20 minutes probably. So that's the black tacky dry now, and next colour I'm going to use is red. This is actually a water-based paint. I say it doesn't matter because it's going into a different area than the black, which is a solvent base. I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch me paint every single bit. You may notice me lifting the acetate up every now and then. Uh, that's just, you get a better view of if you've missed any parts. Not quite sure what's happening down here, but I'm going to let that dry and have a look at it then. But in the meantime, that all looks covered and I'll leave that red to dry. Right, we've had a bit of a time gap. I finished off all the red there, as you saw. I've also added a little bit of outliner um, to this belt. I think I possibly, well, 
I know I missed a bit out when I first did it. So I've added the back outline back over the top there and filled in a gap just up here, leaving that all to dry. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is just the face. A bit of experiment here with a colour. Uh, this is yet another type of glass paint uh, called gallery glass. It was very, very popular at one time. Um, I'm just applying it with the bottle like that. And then I'm going to use my brush again as normal just to make sure the paint goes right up to and onto the outline. This is actually their coral colour. I'm hoping it's going to make a nice flesh colour. I had a bit of a catastrophe the other day where I did a Father Christmas who looked suntanned. Uh, but hopefully this one's going to look alright and obviously I'll have a little bit just down. There we go, and that's done that. I'm not going to make you watch every single part of the, the painting of this, so I will carry on and do a bit more, and then we'll come back to it again. Well, as you can see, I've done the background. Uh, that was done with a water-based paint. Blender blue and purple. Just put in, it gives a nice time, nighttime colour. So now I do believe I am down to my final colour, which will be to add the white into this. Now I've taken the uh, design off the backing, just put the paper over so I've got a, a clear sheet and that should show me a bit better where I've painted and where I haven't. Again, I shall use my solid paintbrush because I've not lost it and blood fill these last few bits. There's actually quite a few because all these snow bits are going to need doing. I'll do the major bits first and I'll do the snow bits last. Again, flood filling, pushing the paint around, making sure it gets right up to the black line. Right, I'm going to carry on doing this. And we'll come back properly when I've finished. Just realised I missed a bit there, which should be the dark blue and purple. We'll come back and do that at the end. So here's my finished bit of glass painting. I'm just going to Cut it out using the outside lines. Might go a little bit over, give myself a bit of breathing space there. And finally I'll do the top. I believe that's the last because that's where it's stuck down. bit completed. Well now we're through to the very last part of the project. Hopefully as I said you've made the frame and we've got the backing here so now all I have to do making sure it's the correct way up 
just put the design in the frame and we'll check a little bit lower than that and see the top of his head check again we don't want to see the black lines on the edge obviously but we do want to see the majority of the design I'm just going to put one little piece on here definitely the right way up obviously we don't want that coming over the top we don't want it going showing through the back so just put that one little bit there check it's in the right place and I am happy with that so I'm quite happy with that check that it's in the right place and it is so then I'll tape it down a little bit more again want to make sure it doesn't come across the bottom it doesn't show through the back of the design either hopefully your cellar tape isn't quite as thick as mine is seems to just do though There we go, and that's looking good. Final thing to do, very final thing to do once I've got this loop out of the way, I will be gluing up the back and putting it on there. Just makes the back look a little bit better, and especially if you're putting on a window, if someone's seeing it from outside, well, it's sort of nice as well. So I shall find my glue here, make sure it comes right up to the edge, make sure all those corners get down, not get any of the glue on the front of this. to avoid it mostly final bit there and that should now stick on there try and do it carefully so I don't have to do too much repositioning without sticking it down. Just have to get that bit of glue off. Uh, but there we have the finished light catcher. I hope you've enjoyed this project as much as I've enjoyed doing it. Um, there are several designs on the website. Please do go and have a look if you're not already on crosspainting.co.uk. If you are, you'll find the designs some designs for the middle and the template for the frames as well. Happy glass painting. Bye.